Today, I'm going to show you how you can find arbitrage opportunities on ETFs. So an ETF stands for Exchange Trade Fund. And so what I'm going to show you today is an example on SLV, which is the iShares Silver Fund. And we're going to see how well SLV tracks the silver commodity price. So let's start by importing the libraries that we're going to use. So I'm going to import pandas as PD, and I'm going to import plotly dot express as px and i'm also going to import uh, from ipython dot display for display to show some charts and tables within the cells so now let's run this and so in this cell what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a markdown markdown section here and here i'm just going to write the first step that we need to do so step number one is to uh, load historical data on SLV ETF and XAG commodity. And to do that, I've already prepared a CSV file with the historical data. So for example, I can create a data frame called SLVDF is equal to pandas dot read CSV. And here I just need to provide the name of the CSV file. So here it's slv underscore m1 dot CSV. So now let me show you what this table looks like. So on the time column, we have the time and here we have the open prices. So let's also visualize this table. So I'm going to visualize table using Plotly. So here slv price fig, fig stands for figure is equal to px.line. So I'm going to create a line chart. And here I'm going to add slvdf as the input. And so on the x-axis, we want to plot time. On the y-axis, we want to plot open. And then so the title of the chart is going to be slvdtf price. So now let me, uh, let me display that with display so display slv price fake and so if you run this what you'll find here is that we have the historical price on slv etf so if we scroll lower um, let's create um, the same thing for the xag commodity price and here i have also uh, imported a csv file so instead of slvdf, let's call the second df xagdf, which is going to hold our xag prices. And the name of this file is xagm1.csv. So we just did once. So here we rename this to xag price fake, and the input is this data frame. So let me rename the title of this chart. So this is xag. Um, commodity price and I'm going to display display this new figure so let's run this cell and here you see that we have the XAG commodity price and here uh, the table with the open data so if you scroll up again what you'll see here is that the charts look very similar but what we want to do is now to analyze the arbitrage between XAG and SLV ETF. And to do that, we're going to merge these two data frames. So I want uh, to have the open prices of SLV and the open prices of XAG in a single table. So to create a merge data frame, uh, we can use pandas.merge. So I can, for example, create a new data frame called merge DF is equal to, and here I'm going to take the SLV data frame and I'm going to merge that with the XAG data frame. So I'm going to merge the data where the time values are the same. So here I'm going to write on is equal to time. And then to uh, better describe the new columns that we create, I will add a suffix. So suffixes is equal to. And so the name of the suffix for first data frame is underscore SLV. And for a second suffix, I'm going to use underscore XAG. So now I'm going to print the result of this data frame. 
So here you see that now I have the SLV and XAG prices in a data frame. So whenever this time value, for example, is 11.00, I have the prices for both assets. So let's now print the prices on the same charts for the both assets. So here I can create a price fake is equal to px.line and I'm going to use the data from the merge df and so on the x-axis I will plot uh, the time values and then on the y-axis I will print both the uh, open underscore slv value and the uh, xag underscore uh, sorry open underscore xag value so now if I display this price figure, now you should see a chart and you see that the prices of XAG and SLV are very correlated. In fact, they're almost the same because the SLV ETF is tracking this exact price. And so the point of looking for arbitrage opportunities is now to try to compute uh, whatever discrepancies we find and see if we can find you know some arbitrage opportunities and so first thing we have to do is that what you can see is that the price of the etf slv starts here at uh, 34.74 and the price of xag commodity is slightly higher at 38 here so what we want to do first is we want to align both prices to find the exact ratio in order to find the discrepancies so in order to explain the relationship between SLV and XAG, we're going to use something called linear, uh, linear regression. And so I'm going to create a new figure to show you an example on that. So I'm going to create lingress fig is equal to px.scatter. So here I'm creating a scatter plot and we're going to use the data from merged df. So our merge TF has the prices of uh, SLV and also from XAG. So now let's have a look uh, what this figure looks like. And so here on this figure, you see that there is an almost perfect linear relationship between SLV and XAG. And that makes sense because SLV is an ETF that tracks the underlying price of XAG. What you can also find is that there are some slight discrepancies between SLV and XAG and we'll get into it later because these discrepancies may represent some arbitrage opportunities but let's first finish this section on the linear regression. So here on this figure I'm just going to add a title. Uh, I'm going to call it linear regression uh, between SLV and uh, XAG. So here, uh, what I want to do also is I want to find a trend line that will uh, apply the linear regression. So here we can uh, also add a parameter trend line is equal to OLS. So this will apply the uh, OLS algorithm to compute the trend line. And I'm also going to copy a code line that will change this uh, that will change this uh, line color to red. So if I run this, what you'll find here is that I have the red line here that goes through my data points. And so the ratio that we're looking for is basically just the slope of this trend line. So in other words, what you can think of is for every point of SLV, how much does XAG move? So let's go down here and compute that using stats models. So now let's import stats models. So from stats models dot regression, we're going to import linear model. So what this does is uh, we can now compute the slope of this trend line here. And so here our model would be equal to linear model. And then we do dot OLS 
and then the input of this function would be the the prices of slv and xag so here i will add the first column which is the open slv and then we would take the second column of merge df and take open xag so this is the basically the x and y that we're putting in here and then we're going to um, or display the result so our result is equal to model dot fit and then here uh, we will print the ratio so the ratio that we're looking for is the result dot params and then we take the value of open xag so this uh, right here so let me print the result and show you what the results mean. So our ratio uh, would be this value here. So let's run this. And as you can see here, the ratio is 0 0.9. So for every point that SLV moves, uh, XAG will move 0 0.9 uh, times. And so now that the ratio has been computed, let's now jump to uh, point four, which is adjusting the price and computing the spread. So to do that, uh, we are going to take again our merge data frame and we are going to adjust for price difference using the ratio. So our open XAG adjusted is equal to and here I'm going to take the current open XAG price and I'm going to multiply that by the ratio that we've computed, which in our case is 0 0.9. So now if we look at the data frame, you will find that here the XAG adjusted price is now closer to the SLV price. And now let me also create a fig. So I'm going to create a price adjusted figure is equal to px dot line and here i'm going to use the data from merge df and then the x-axis we're going to have the time values and on the y-axis i'm going to show the open slv price and the adjusted price so now let's display this new figure so i'm going to display that and run this cell. So as you can see, now we have the prices SLV and XAG almost identical to each other. And that is because we did this price adjustment using ratio. So here the blue line is the SLV price and the red line is the XAG adjusted price. So now we see how almost perfectly SLV tracks the price of XAG, but let's have a look at, for example, some potential discrepancies. And if uh, you've heard the news and you know uh, we're watching the recent tariffs, uh, last week there was a small discrepancy. And if you look, for example, at this time here, we see that the price between SLV and XAG does deviate a bit. So let's now go to uh, the next cell and compute the spread, which is basically just the difference between those two lines. So then to compute the spread, or actually we can just do that in the same cell here. So here our spread is equal to the price of SLV. So we take the price of SLV and then we uh, we take the difference from the open XAG adjusted. So now we have computed the spread. So here I'm going to create another figure called the spread figure is equal to uh, PX dot line. And here I'm going to use the merge DF data on the X axis we're plotting the time and then on the y axis i'm going to compute the spread so if we scroll down here we see the spread chart uh, right here uh, let me actually just add the titles so it's uh, 
more clear what we are looking at so here i will call this right the so the title is a price adjusted chart and here the title would be a spread chart so let's run this again <clears throat> And here we can see that we have the spread chart. So most of the time, this, uh, the spread value is around zero, which makes sense because, uh, you know, again, the ETF is tracking tracking the price of silver. But what you see also in uh, during the recent days is that there is some tracking error, and most likely this is caused by Trump Terrace. So what you see here, for example, on October 9th is that here, uh, we were, you know, the spread was around zero, then it spiked up to 0 0.35, and then it went as slow as minus one. And then some of you might ask, how much is minus one? So minus one is actually quite a lot. So if you, for example, bought, you know, 100,000 worth of shares in US dollars on SLV, uh, this 100,000 worth of shares we need to compute how much shares it is. So right now, uh, the price of SLV, let's say is approximately 50. So this is just an approximation. So 100,000 divided by 50 is roughly 2,000, right? So if you have 100,000 US dollars worth of shares, uh, that would be uh, 2,000 2, units of shares. So if you sold at minus one, right so you would uh, i mean if you bought slv at minus one and shorted xag commodity at the same time to create this hedge and then exit at zero this position would create a profit of two thousand us dollars right hypothetically but you never know you know if the tracking error is at minus 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.75 this requires some fur back testing but it just shows that when you find these discrepancies in the price between those two assets, you can very much consider that uh, it is a good time to start trading. Also, what you see here is that the standard deviation or the volatility is much higher right now, right? So for example, during these times here, right, you see when it's very tight around zero, most likely you are not able to arbitrage that because the transaction costs, the execution and so on, might be too much to overcome you know to to actually generate some profit but here right now especially you know when you're at minus zero point let's say 0 0.3 0 0.5 that has a lot of uh potential or for example during the recent days we can actually try to you know back this or prepare a live strategy in these cases so uh, this is what i wanted to show in today's video uh, this is a very simple analysis where we're tracking uh, an ETF against the underlying commodity price. And you can try to apply that on anything you want. For example, GLD versus gold or some stock indices against underlying stocks. The procedure is pretty much the same. And so what we're looking at again is if there's you know, a big deviation from our uh, from the zero, this is our signal that we can potentially start trading and make money. So thank you for watching the video. If you want to learn more about algorithmic trading, uh, you can visit my website atjresearch.com. And if you're interested in the code and the Jupyter Notebook, I will upload it on my website for my members. So thank you again and see you in the next video.